Hi, this is Alan Arkish with a special edition of Trailers from Hell because I'm doing it from my home. This is my office, and I've surrounded myself with all things Grateful Dead. All my albums, uh, box sets, uh, movies, and in those drawers back there is maybe 60, 70 Grateful Dead concerts on CD. I've been a lifelong fan of the Grateful Dead, and I wanted you to get a context for my commentary. The first time I saw the band was in June of 1967 at a little club in Greenwich Village called the Cafe of Gogo, -Go, which was in the basement of the Bleecker Street Cinema and held about 250 people. And they weren't very good. They were goofy. <laughs> Two years later, I started working at the Fillmore East, and there I saw them 40 or 50 times and became friendly with Jerry Garcia. That's Jerry. That's me. And aside from Jerry, I got to know the rest of the band and their roadies. What a bunch they were in their 20s. They were like halfway between pirates and cowboys on a big adventure. In the 70s, when I moved to Los Angeles, Jerry and his roadie Steve Parrish would come by my apartment to watch movies. Jerry was a big cinephile, and I had a 16-millimeter projector. I'm going to tell you what kind of movies I uh, played for Jerry because this is a movie site. And uh, Jerry liked anything where the fourth wall was broken or was magical realism. So I turned them on to Confessions of an Opium Eater, uh, Hell's a Poppin', Eight and a Half, uh, Only Angels Have Wings. And we worked together on the Grateful Dead movie, which he directed and I cut the trailer for. Throughout the 80s and 90s, we remained friends. And... About a month before he died, I saw him at Giant Stadium and the Dead. They were playing. They had sold out Giant Stadium for two nights. That's 130,000 seats. I say all this because with some trepidation, I approach this documentary about the Grateful Dead. It's uh, a long, strange trip. I was hoping that, uh, well, that it would be truthful and that it wouldn't leave out too much. And because I had also worked on a couple of dead movie projects, um, I was concerned. I wanted it to be great. Steve Parrish, Jerry's roadie, called me after he saw the movie. And he said that he couldn't sit through it all because he started to cry and he had to leave the theater, which is a good sign. When I saw it, I got all set. And I want to tell you that four hours later, I knew I had seen the best possible movie about this American phenomenon. Yeah, I know. Four hours. And the storytelling is really interesting. It's kind of like a, a psychedelic Citizen Kane. And Jerry had his own rosebud. Spoiler alert, it's Frankenstein. For his whole life, Jerry identified with Frankenstein. So, you're saying to yourself, four hours. Uh, psychedelic Citizen Kane. Well, back in the day, we used to have an expression called, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. Now, if you think four hours is long, oh, what about this? This is a box set from the Europe 72 tour. Four hours, this is 75 CDs. Every note they played in Europe, fantastic shows. And I worked at six of them. Now, I'm gonna let you go in a minute, but I wanted to show you one more piece of, uh, memorabilia because I found this today when I was looking around. This is Live Dead, the first live album, and it's a great record, and it really opened the fans up to them. I bought this in 1969. I don't think I played it for 30 years. Well, I used to, I used to clean seeds and stems with it, and I seem to have left behind a joint of what I'm hoping is Acapulco Gold. So, Trailers from Hell. Time to take that long, strange trip. This is a really entertaining trailer. There was a conscious decision in my life to be involved in something that was flowing and dynamic and living. Something that had a life of its own and I was just a part of it. The movie is an amazing collection of live performances, interviews both new and old, freshly unearthed and unseen documentaries, wacky TV appearances, and of course, there's the deadheads. The narrative of the Grateful Dead was that we're the same as you, you're the same as us. When you see the band's story as a whole, you can't help but see how unique they were. The most successful touring band ever, and it was all based on a simple ethos. Yeah, let's have some fun. 
we were experimenting with psychedelics as much as we were playing music. The movie goes deeply into the role that drugs played in their evolution. Open to possibility and leaving yourself open to magic. The acid test experience really formed the band as a group mind. In this context, their LSD adventures come off as slapstick. The cosmic jokester is always on their shoulder like their conscience, urging them to give back what you get and the audience understood. Sound. That's the link between them and the audience. We built the wall of sound with our own two hands. It was like the voice of God. There was an unspoken deal with the Deadheads. Follow us anywhere. Twirl, tape the shows for free, spread the word. Almost against their will, they kept growing bigger and bigger until it was out of control and Frankenstein consumed his creator, who never wanted the job in the first place. At its core, this is a very truthful telling of Garcia's story. Who was in charge? Well, I'm so glad you asked that. There were times when I was in charge, times when Jerry was in charge. Your truck that had a blown carburetor, that carburetor was the boss. Jerry is as magnetic as the man that I knew for 25 years, but he never wanted to be king, and that's when the weight of it all led to hard drugs and death. Jerry Garcia did not bargain to be the mayor of a traveling countercultural town. A long, strange trip is not just about the Grateful Dead. It's about a bright American dream that 53 years on has not grown dim. It's not up to us to define the Grateful Dead. It's this living, breathing thing. I think that's one of the parts of its magic. Not defining it is that it becomes everything. I'm so glad they made such a good movie. Um, uh, um, oh, good. Good start. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like those podcasts where they just sort of they're in the middle of a conversation. Way to go, Mr. Morrow. <laughs> I'm on a podcast. Goodbye. <laughs>